Hey, I'm Neil, your friendly neighborhood data guy, and today I'm going to guide you through the basics of EasyMorph. EasyMorph is a low-code tool that is perfect for data analysis, data preparation, and business automation. But more importantly, through its unique design, EasyMorph teaches you how to become conversant in the language of data and analytics. Once you have a little practice, you'll become much better at asking and answering questions about your data. You can compare EasyMorph to other tools like Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Power Query, SQL, Python with pandas or data frames, and ETL tools like Informatica, Alteryx, or Nime. In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of EasyMorph, so let's get started. Today we're going to use EasyMorph to analyze and report on the Forbes Billionaire list. Now this is a list that Forbes magazine puts together every year, and we have the latest 2023 list. We also have the 2023 GDP estimate provided by the IMF for each country that is mentioned in the Forbes Billionaire list. What we hope to do is combine the billionaire data set with the country GDP data set to answer the following question. Which billionaires have the largest percentage of their home country's 2023 GDP? And then we want to complete the following task. Send an email with an Excel workbook attachment containing the attached report of all billionaires with more than 5% of their country's GDP. The main skills that you'll learn in this video are how to filter rows, how to sort rows, how to aggregate like building a pivot table in Excel or a group by clause in SQL, how to merge two tables together similar to a VLOOKUP in Excel or a join statement in SQL, and how to derive new columns and derive new tables. So let's get to work. First thing we need to do is open EasyMorph itself. When you open EasyMorph you see a recent projects but you can also see a number of examples not a good it's not a bad place to start really is one of these examples here this is similar to what we're doing right now you can also instantly import data but i prefer just to start with a blank project and from there just drag in our data files so here's our gdp data let's just drag that in first and then is our billionaire list we'll drag that in second and now that we have our data, the first thing is to profile both of these data sets. Now, when I say profile, what I really mean is get a sense of the size of the table uh, and the distribution of values. So we can see right off the bat, when we click on the table, we look down here, we can see there's three columns and 77 rows. Um, to get a better sense of the values, we can right click here and select table metadata. And we can see right off the bat that this country field, which is what we're going to be merging our billionaires list on, is unique. So that's heartening. And um, let's just uh, format this field just to make it a little bit more readable. So you just click on the field name and then go up here and choose the format you want, which is this format here. And now we can sort of more easily read the data. We can always see that, see that these countries like the U.S. and China have the largest GDPs. Now that we're profiling the, the GDP data, let's profile the billionaire list. Now, if we right click here, we'll notice with the table metadata that this name field is in fact not unique. And we can see that in a couple ways. We can see that there's no yes here. And we can also see that the number of distinct values is 2,638 while the total number of rows is 2,640. So let's go down to the next level and see if we can figure out why this is not unique and how we might be able to fix this. So we, in order to do that, we're gonna go into analysis mode. And in order to get to analysis mode, you need to click this maximize button. Now that we are in analysis mode, we can take our data profiling to the next level. So first thing I wanna do actually is format this to make it more readable. And the next thing I want to do is drag these fields out into the field pane, or the filter pane as it's called. Uh, I'm going to also drag out a country as well. Now the nice thing about this filter pane is we can sort by the count to build a kind of a quick histogram of our data. And we can see here that United States has 735 billionaires versus China with 490, India 169, and so on. We can also build a pivot table over here and a pivot chart to see what the billionaire net worth is by each country. So let's just do that quickly just to get a better sense of the distribution of data. So I'm going to click chart pane, then I'm going to click chart, and I'm going to drag in the country as a category, 
and the net worth as my series. And I just want to sort by my series in descending order. And you can see there, not surprisingly, that United States has the largest number of billionaire dollars. Let's do the same thing, but in a cross table or pivot table as you might know it in Excel. So we're going to drag our country into rows and our net worth as our metric. And we'll sort it again by the um, uh, net worth in descending order. And we can see again that the United States is at the top of the list with what appears to be four and a half trillion dollars with a T. China has 1.6 trillion. Um, India's got 674 billion and so on and so forth. That's pretty astounding. Uh, but now let's get back to what we were originally here for, which is to figure out what's going on with these duplicates and to determine whether or not we really have a duplicate problem. So we're going to go over to the name field and we're going to sort by count. And you can see at the top of the list here, there's two names. So we're going to check them out one by one. I'm going to click this name first. And right off the bat, you can see just looking at the net worth and their age and the source that these are two different individuals. Now let's do the, the same thing with this individual or perhaps duplicate. And again, it appears as though that these are in fact two different individuals with different ages and sources. So we're not going to worry about deduplicating those names because we know that these are already different individuals and they can be easily distinguished by their age and their source and their net worth. Okay, now let's return to normal view so that we can actually start to begin merging these two tables together and calculating the percent GDP. To accomplish this, we just select the table that we want to make our main table, which is the billionaires list. And then we're going to click on new action to find the merge action. Now, before I do that, I just want to kind of browse kind of slowly just so you can get a sense of all of the different types of actions that easy morph uh, offers and you might know this by another name transformation um, but when i was saying earlier how easy morph teaches you how to become conversant in the language of data and analytics this is kind of what i'm talking about here is that we're building a kind of um a script if you will and we're building it out of these these visual metaphors these visual icons that are really easy to work with now we're going to use, in our case, the merge uh, action, and I'm going to click there. And again, this Easy Morph makes it as simple as possible to do something like a VLOOKUP. I personally find the VLOOKUP function to be a bit confusing. Um, I find join statements to be a bit confusing as well. What I love about Easy Morph is not only does it make it easy to do something like merging two tables together, but it even figures out all the ticky tack stuff like what table should I actually merge with and which column should I merge on. So it's already figured that out for me. It knows to go to the GDP table and it knows based on these column names being the same that they should also be merged on that. Now all we have to do is decide, well, what field do I want to bring in from the GDP table? And that's pretty straightforward. We just want the GDP estimate in dollars. So we're just going to select that field and then click apply. Now that we've completed our merge, the last thing we just need to do is confirm that the GDP estimate is there. And sure enough, it is. So now we're in a position to calculate our percentage of GDP. And that is very easy to do, as we shall see in a moment. To derive a new field, we need only right click on the field that we want to insert after. And after we right click, we just say insert column. It's going to put it right here, as you can see. I'm going to call this new column net worth percent GDP. And then I'm going to hit the little formula button to go into the expression editor. And the expression editor, I'm just going to take the net worth and divide it by the GDP estimate. Click OK, then click Apply. And just to make it more readable, I'm going to format that as a percentage. And you can see right off the bat that this Bernard Arnault and family have nearly 7% of France's GDP, which is astounding. Now that we've calculated our um, net worth as a percentage of GDP, 
The only thing we have to do now is filter out all of the individuals that have less than 5% of the um, of the GDP. And then we also want to sort it in descending order so that it looks nice when we uh, we open it in Excel and when we send it to our friend. So to do that, um, the simplest way I think we can do this is just drag out this net worth field, sort in descending order, and then just I'm just going to manually select all of the um, values that are greater than 5%, like so. And now we have our final list. Um, but I want to make sure that I'm permanently adding this filter to my list of transformations. So I'm going to right click on the top here and then say add as action. And now my filter has been baked into the table. So you can see our table now only has 29 rows. And here they are from top to bottom. And as a final flare or flourish, I'm just going to sort it in descending order. And now I'm ready to send this off as an Excel workbook. Okay, before I send it off as an Excel workbook, I'm going to minimize this table, the GDP table, because I don't really need to look at it anymore. And I'm going to derive a new table, which I'm going to use to generate my Excel workbook, as well as the email. So I'm going to click here, the plus button, and then I'm going to click derive table. And here is my new table that I will be sending off to a good friend. To export to Excel, we just click Add New Action. We go to the Export pane, and we just select Export to Excel file. Now, I, I'm just going to overwrite an existing export that I've already done, bit, and I'm going to say Overwrite over here, and click Apply, and run my action. And sure enough, if I look into my data here, I can see that we've just overwritten that document. And now we're ready to do our final flourish, which is email this workbook to a friend. So I'm going to click Add New Action again. Now I'm going to go over the workflow. And as you can see, we have quite a few steps. There's a new chat GTP step, by the way, which is quite interesting. Um, but we're just going to go down to the send an email step, which is right here. And I already have a Gmail connector set up, so I don't need to do that again. And I'm going to send to my good friend, which is really just myself. And I'm going to say, this is billionaires with more than 5% of country GDP. And then I'm going to add the attachment, which is the Excel document. And I'm going to click Apply. And then finally, I'm going to say Run Action. And boom! My email has been sent, and my good friend has received it, hopefully. So on that note, we're finished with the demo. Now let's return to the final recap. Before finishing this video, I want to point out why it is that EasyMorph is such a joy to use. EasyMorph puts the user in a flow state unlike any other tool because EasyMorph is the only tool that first utilizes local hardware and avoids unnecessary web-centric technologies which tend to be laggy and janky. Um, second, it always shows you what your data looks like. Other tools, they tend to put emphasis on code or boxes and lines which takes your eye away from the data and can be disoriented. And third, other tools allow you to either prepare data or analyze data, but rarely do they do both of them seamlessly. EasyMorph's unique analysis mode allows you to do both at the same time, and it's this particular feature that most enables the flow state and makes EasyMorph stand out from the crowd.